In the beach chair position, the arthroscopy is commenced using a 70 degree arthroscope in the posterior portal. We confirm the presence of anterior shoulder instability with arm manipulation in abduction and external rotation. The rotator interval is debrided via the northwest portal. The subcoracoid space is cleared using electrocautery. Dissection is only made medially as far as the medial border of the coracoid. The coracoid inferior surface is debrided and the conjoint tendon is identified. Next, the superior surface of the coracoid process is debrided. Here you can see the anterior portion of the conjoint tendon and the pectoralis minor tendon, which has not been detached. Needles are used to aid in positioning the other portals. A switching stick is used through the west portal to retract the subcoracoid tissue inferiorly with the arm in internal rotation. A motorized rasp is introduced via the northwest portal. The osteotomy is made at the base of the coracoid process. We advocate the use of a combination of the rasp and a motorized burr to perform the osteotomy. Here we finish the most medial aspect of the osteotomy with a kerosene rongeur to reduce the risk of damaging medial neurovascular structures. Once the osteotomy is completed, the coracoid process drill guide is introduced via the north portal and positioned over the tip of the coracoid process. The hole is drilled under direct vision and the central drill is removed, leaving the outer drill cannula in situ. A PDS shuttle suture is used to pass the bone link sutures through the coracoid process. The button is seated against the superior cortex. The sutures are then managed by placing them in the north portal. After debridement of the anterior glenoid via the northwest portal, the arthroscope is switched to the northwest portal. A switching stick is placed in the posterior portal parallel to the glenoid for the introduction of the half pipe. The glenoid drill guide is introduced via the half pipe and the tip placed at the desired exit point on the anterior glenoid surface. The half pipe is removed and the glenoid tunnel is drilled. A switching stick is used via the west portal to retract the subscapularis muscle whilst drilling. The drill guide is removed and the drill cannula left in situ to allow passing of a PDS shuttle suture which is retrieved via the west portal along with the bone link sutures. The bone link sutures are then passed through the glenoid tunnel once the drill cannula is removed and these are retrieved posteriorly. The second button is then loaded over the sutures, then the two loops are separated and a knee knot is made. The button is cinched to the posterior glenoid without tension. With the button tensioner device loaded and the arthroscope placed in the posterior portal, the bone link is progressively tensioned under direct vision. Here the coracoid process can be seen being transferred inferomedially. The degree of coracoid transfer is assessed progressively throughout tensioning, whilst the arm is rotated, assessing for subscapularis excursion. Once the coracoid transfer is completed, we can see the sling effect created by the conjoint tendon. Stability testing confirms humeral stability throughout shoulder abduction and rotation. The bone link button is finally secured with surgical knots definitively locking the knee snot.